Welcome everyone. We are so thankful for your interest in STEM education and we are going to go over some of the programs that UK's Department of STEM Education offers. And if you are joining us live on YouTube, you are welcome to put questions in. Um, we are going to first introduce ourselves. I'm Dr. Lisa Amick and I'm a math education professor and I primarily teach, teach a lot of the math um, methods courses. And I also chair the Undergraduate STEM Plus program for mathematics. Hi, I'm Katie Davenport. I'm currently a senior in the STEM Plus program and my emphasis is in math. I'm starting my student teaching in a few weeks. <laughs> Dr. Xiang. Hey, I'm Dr. Xiang. Uh, I'm a science educator and uh, currently I'm teaching the science methods course at the elementary, um, middle school and high school level. Okay, and um, I also co-chair the STEM Plus program for the science part. Okay, and hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Wilhelm. I'm a professor of science education. I teach the assessment and student teaching courses in the STEM Plus program, and I'm also co-chairing currently the STEM Plus program. Jenna? Hello everyone, my name is Jenna Damastis. I'm the Director of Recruitment with the College of Education. So I get to work with all the students that are interested in the college um, and also majoring in any one of our programs within the College of Education, including the STEM Plus program. So if you have any questions along the way, as far as admissions, scholarship, housing, um, I'm kind of your go-to contact person. And speaking of the STEM Plus program, that is our program for undergraduate students. It's a four year degree. Um, and we have one of our students joining us, our current students joining us, which is Katie. And so she's gonna start us off by talking about um, just kind of why she wanted to become a secondary math teacher. Thanks. So yeah, so I started college actually as an engineering major. Uh, I came into college being told that if you're good at math, science, or both, you go engineering. And so that's kind of what I did. Uh, and I really didn't like it after a few months in the program. It just really didn't feel like a great fit for me. Um, I learned a lot of it was that I'm a very person-oriented person, and I'm not as much a things or tangible or like problem-centered person. Um, and I just really like just the act of communicating, especially with math. And so all signs kind of pointed to math education. So I was really excited to um, just hop into that boat. So I started STEM plus my second semester and then I just went with education all the way through. Um, but I've really enjoyed it since then. And especially being in the program, I really look forward to being able to still enjoy the things that I love about math specifically, um, but also just being around people and being people oriented and being able to communicate those things with students. Thank you so much for sharing. We hear that a lot, actually. We have a lot of students that start in a different uh, degree route and then change. And we also hear people talk about um, job security because we have 100% job placement um, out of the STEM Plus program. So you won't have to worry about finding a job after you graduate. Um, working with people and kids is another thing that we hear often in terms of, you know, every single day is new and different and you get to work with people. Um, I have a chance to become a leader. And then also in our program, we have domestic and international opportunities. So you can student teach overseas, you can student teach in Lexington, you can student teach, um, you have a lot of different opportunities for that. Um, so I think next up is gonna be Jenna and she's gonna talk about some funding opportunities. Yes, so that's the biggest question right now um, when you're looking at, you know, colleges, universities to apply to is what funding opportunities are available. There are a wide range of funding opportunities available from the university. But in addition to those university opportunities, we also have college of education specific funding opportunities. We have college level scholarships that you can apply for. To apply for those, you do have to be accepted to the university first, and then you do have to fill out a separate application. So we always encourage students to apply early to the University of Kentucky, so you aren't missing those scholarship deadlines. And then you can fill out that College of Education scholarship application, and you must do so by February 5th. And that's a new deadline for students that are applying for fall um, 2021. But February 5th is the deadline to apply for our college scholarships. By filling out that separate 
application, you are applying to all of our scholarships. So we have a pretty quite a big range of scholarships that we do offer our incoming students. Some are based on financial need, which you do have to fill out that FAFSA to qualify for those. Some are merit based. Some are based on location, where you live, and then some are specific to major. So by filling out that one application, you're actually applying to all of our scholarships. Um, so then we have a faculty committee that meets, see what you qualify for, um, and they're the ones that make those decisions. But we do offer, again, a big wide range. So we do want you to fill out that application by February 5th. We also have um, more scholarships available and more opportunities available for funding. Um, so please shoot me an email if you want more specific information about all of the things that we have to offer. Um, but I do think that Dr. Amick is going to talk about an opportunity. Um, and then Dr. Wilhelm is going to talk about an opportunity as well. Yeah, so Jenna mentioned the college-wide scholarship. So that's the entire College of Education. Um, but more specifically, like in the, the STEM education department, we offer a program called NOISE. And that is something that you can apply for in your junior, senior year. So after you've become accepted into the teacher education program. Um, and it's $10,000 annually. And it's not a loan that you have to pay back. Um, you just have to make a commitment to teach in... Um, essentially teach in a public school after you graduate. And so you can, you can apply and if you are awarded those funds, you can get $10,000, like I said, annually, your junior and senior year. Um, and then your commitment again is just to teach in a public school for um, some years after you graduate. And so again, if you are interested in, in that opportunity, you can reach out to me or any of us actually, and we can give you more information on that. So that's just an, an example of one opportunity that we have um, within the STEM education department. And then Dr. Wilhelm, do you wanna talk about the REU program? Absolutely. So like Dr. Amick said, um, for the NOISE program, you do receive $10,000 um, per year as you participate in that program and it is a stipend. And then there's another opportunity, it's called Research Experiences for Undergraduate Students. It's a grant funded by the National Science Foundation. And you get $7,200 a year if you participate in this program. And by participating in this program, you have the opportunity to conduct STEM education research with STEM education faculty members within our department. Not only do you learn how to conduct research, you learn how to maybe do some action research in your own classrooms. And then you also have the opportunity to write a proposal, submit it, um, uh, or apply um, to get accepted at a conference and present your research at the National Conference of Undergraduate Research. And every single one of our students in the last six years have written the proposal and gotten accepted to present at that conference. So, oh, and then I guess I'm on for the next one too. <laughs> so also just so to let you know about exactly um, what that means about that double major with STEM plus. So st STEM plus, Suppose you want to be a physics teacher, all right? But suppose you want to get your physics degree out of the um, College of Arts and Sciences. Well, you can still do that. Get your degree out of the College of Arts and Sciences, major in physics, but also do a double major and you have the secondary major in STEM plus and it's an additional 29 credit hours. And so by doing that, you have a second major and you are also going to be able to get certified to teach physics. So that's what we mean by double major, but you can also do it in the reverse order. You could have the College of Education be where you get your degree and your primary major is in the College of Education. And then your secondary major could be out of the physics department with whatever the required hours, I believe for physics, the required hours is an extra 45 credit hours for which is equivalent to a physics major. So there are multiple ways that you can go about becoming a STEM teacher. So Katie's actually doing that right now. She's a double major in the STEM plus program for math. So she's double majoring in math and STEM education. So Katie, do you wanna tell us a little bit about what that's like as a student? Yeah, absolutely. I think I was a little bit daunted by having the double major when I first came into college, um, just because it is kind of scary. You're doing two programs at once and it's a lot. But I've learned over the course of my studies, like two major things. Firstly, being that the majors fit together so well. So especially for math, some of the requirements that you would need, such as problem solving for teacher, 
also fit into the requirements for a math major. So a lot of the classes that I took actually fit into both majors. And so I'm able to finish having started in a different major, uh, still on time, still with enough credits. I didn't even come into college with any credits. Um, so it's very doable. I have not had to take any summers or anything. Um, and they just fit together really well. Um, but the second thing is the cohort that you get to have when going through the STEM Plus program, especially as you get into your sophomore, junior, and senior years, the people that you take all a lot, mostly all of your STEM classes with are so supportive. And we are all taking these classes together. And some of the math classes and science classes, these like upper level classes are really difficult, um, but we are definitely a tight knit group. And so it's such a cool thing to be able to work through these classes with each other and to support each other and to really be there for each other and cheer each other on. Um, so it's great having the support of the way the majors fit together and just of the people within your major because it is a really great group. Awesome. So we have two questions that are coming in live. Um, Dr. Wilhelm, I'm going to answer the first one. Will you take the second one that there in the chat? The first one is um, that I mentioned that we have 100% job placement and that's true for our program. So um, the question is, where do those students go? We, our students go everywhere. Um, sometimes our students go back to their homes, whether that be Chicago or Louisville or Eastern or Western Kentucky, um, all over the country. Sometimes that's Lexington or surrounding counties. A lot of times our students get hired where they student teach. So let's say they, start, they taught in Fayette County, one of the high schools here locally, they get hired on because they did a great job and the principal wants to keep them. A lot of times they have their site set on going back home, wherever home is. So they're in communication with that principal from the beginning um, and you know, they're, then they know there's a job available and so they apply and, and they're, they get that position. So they kind of go everywhere um, from local to all across the nation. Okay, as far as the second question in terms of, I, I was hoping somebody was going to ask this, the kind of research that uh, undergraduate researchers do with the STEM education faculty. Well, I'll talk about the research projects that I have done uh, with my students. And the first project was I had students understand how middle level students understand scientific phenomena like the cause of moon phases. And the other project that they've been working on as of currently this year is how students understand and teachers, how do teachers understand the cause of seasons? And so that's what I have done with my students. Uh, Dr. Xiang, why don't you describe the research that you did with your REUs last year? Of course. So my research focused on using computer model to support science teaching and the learning. And the last year I worked with two awesome um, students to study the knowledge teachers need to use computer model in, in their classrooms. Yeah, we uh, did a great job by interviewing teachers and uh, uh, looking into their classrooms and uh, we find out many, many interesting things happening there. Yeah, and both students are really, really excited and they get to propose, um, present their findings in conference and also in some very, very uh, good uh, national uh, meetings. Yeah. Thank you. And there are math opportunities as well. I had REU students and we looked at investigative intervention courses for middle school math. Um, so there's both math and science options. So speaking of options, um, let's talk a little bit about career opportunities. So sometimes people think that um, if you get a degree in education, you become a high school teacher, and then there's no other option for you after that, or that is like the end of your career path. And that is definitely not true. Um, you can teach, you know, your entire career in the high school classroom. Some people do that. They love it. Um, and they, you know, it's very fulfilling, but other people go on to become a curriculum coach. So if, you know, if you have several years under your belt teaching, and you want to be the math coach for the district or the science coach, you can go on to do something like that or be an instructional specialist. Um, some people help contribute to writing textbooks or providing professional development. If you get involved with the noise opportunity, you'll learn very quickly that there is a lot of professional development that happens in that program. And so not only do you um, participate in that professional development, sometimes you help put on that professional development and um, share your ideas with fellow teachers. You could become a mentor teacher for a brand new teacher. So maybe you're in your you know, fifth or sixth year teaching and you wanna mentor a brand new first year teacher. You could become a coach or a team leader or a department chair. Um, there's all kinds of things you could do with your teaching degree. And then if you decide that you wanna go on to graduate school, you could um, you know, become a professor in the STEM education department like us. 
And then one other thing I wanted to highlight was um, that even though you're graduating in Kentucky and you're getting certification to teach in Kentucky, that doesn't mean that you're limited to teach here. Kentucky has reciprocity with I think over 45 of the states. And so what that means is if you wanna go teach in Illinois, for example, you would just apply, um, turn in your transcripts, turn in your Kentucky certification. Usually you have to pay some kind of a fee, um, but then that you can also, you know, earn your certification in other states as well. Um, so it's definitely possible to transfer and teach other places. Mm -hmm. And I see there's a question, will I take education classes my freshman year or is it mainly core classes? So yes, you will. You'll take uh, an SEM 110 course your freshman year. And in that course, you have the opportunity to do some uh, field experiences. Uh, Dr. Amick, do you wanna talk more about that class? Because you've taught that one, right? I have taught it and I'm actually teaching it this spring. So SEM stands for STEM education. That's one of the courses that we offer in our department. And 110 is usually freshman or sophomore students who are interested in STEM education. So this is the introductory course to STEM education. We have you do like 20 to 30 hours in local schools so that you can be working with local teachers and seeing what classrooms are like. We have you do a lot of observations, note taking. We have you do some planning and grading and just kind of give you an experience of what schools are like and what math and science education looks like in modern day. So that's that's an education class that you will take your freshman or sophomore year. Um, primarily, you'll be taking your content courses those two years. So if you're, you know, chemistry or biology or math, you'll be taking a lot of those courses your freshman and sophomore year. And then your junior and senior year will primarily be your education courses. But you do take that, ed that one education course, um, usually your freshman year. Okay. All right, I think we have time for one more question. Uh, I see it says, what grades will I be able to teach? So grades that you'll be able to teach is eighth through 12th with your teaching certification, whether it's physics, chemistry, biology, math, it's eight through 12. So, well, thank you for joining us. Uh, we appreciated talking with you today and please feel free to uh, send us an email or drop us a line if you have any kind of questions whatsoever. Thank you very much.